Hey everyone, welcome back to Pitfall, Blackout, Blake here, same crew as last time, Matt and Connor, and we are getting back to the flooded courtyard, and fortunately getting out of it pretty quickly, because this area just sucks. <laughs> yeah. I, I really hate it, I hate that you have to swim through so much of it, but, like I said, you usually just cross, you know, through it uh, only a couple of times, so. Yeah, yeah. You get one more running power up and you'll just run across the water. Oh, oh my gosh, that would be that's sweet. A thing. <laughs> so you got the monkey amulet. I guess is that just a story progression thing, or does that give you any abilities? No, it's a story thing. Okay. Were those boats there last time? Yeah. Oh, I don't remember them. Yeah, now oh, we can go yeah, over here yeah, to I the remember. native jungle. Gotta make peace with the natives. Yeah, yeah. Oh, right, yeah, that's what you were doing. Yeah, it's a great run. It just <laughs> <laughs> I got places to be by. It's like he's winding up to spin dash or something. Yeah. No, that's when so he rolls into a, a ball he winds up to spin dash. Yeah. This is just a human Sonic game. Prove me wrong. Sonic's in the lead. <laughs> Hang on, I'm gonna come make peace with you guys. Well, let me just beat the shit out of a couple of you first. You know? yeah. Well, these guys, if you'll notice, have skull masks and they throw stink bombs. They are the renegades. Damn. Oh. Dang. Yeah, so they they're not a part eyes. of the regular. Yeah. They're not a part of the regular natives village. Yeah. The, yeah. They just they 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 fight the regular natives too. They're just evil. Ah uh, yes. So we will still be and, beating up natives, just different natives now. Yeah. Well, the ones who uh who you know refuse to make peace because they can speak the same language as you. It's the um, Halo Four style of uh, creating a bad guy. Where hey, you remember how you made friends with all those alien races? Well, there was just like a rebel group that's big enough to like be another threat for the entire galaxy. So you get to fight them. So you can still fight all you can still fight all your alien aliens. Races. You can still fight all your favorite aliens, even though they all became your friends at the end of Halo Three. I, I, I really ironically kind of always thought it was fun. like I always kind of had a soft spot for that. That always kind of made me laugh when games did that. No. So well, Halo gonna, yeah, like for like dev that. purposes, you're never gonna take the time to design a, an enemy and then just stop using it. You know. You get yeah. some bombs tossed at you from somewhere. Yeah, it's the guy up there. I, I spend way too much time trying to figure out how to get up there, and it's like, and look, they've roasted a Tuco. Oh no! Oh. I was gonna kill that thing, and they killed it before me. <laughs> exactly. So you gotta turn yeah, around I, and like long range snipe it. Or yeah, I, I, cause there's an idol up there, so I'm just trying to figure out how to get up there. Uh, I don't remember if I figure it out or just say screw it, and I'm gonna do it later. But yeah. I spend way too much time doing it. <laughs> yeah. You, while we're uh, while I'm wasting oh. time, I will say real quick. I looked up. Some of the yeah. voice actors. So obviously, Steve Bloom is Harry, done hundreds of roles. You like how he bangs his chin on the ladder when he slides. <laughs> I do like that, actually. <laughs> uh, it's uh, David Kay who voices Quick Claw. Uh, and he's another one of those guys who's, you know, had like just uh, this hundreds of, of roles. This is a human um, Sonic game, proved me no, wrong. No, no, I'm sorry, no. David Kay voices um, John St. Clair. That's the enemy. He used the voice of Clank and Ratchet and Clank. I was going to say Reno oh. Romano is the voice of Quick Claw, excuse me. Huh. And I had joked about him like pulling a Batman. Well, he actually voiced Batman in WB's The Batman. Uh, he voiced Spider-Man and Spider-Man Unlimited uh. and in the two PlayStation 1 Spider-Man games. And he oh, was really? also the voice of Tuxedo Mask. <laughs> Back in the day, so yeah. Mr. Serena. 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 Yeah, yeah. Uh, for the first season, and then Vince, I think it was Vince Carrazzo who took over um, for the rest of the series. But he was the he was the first. The OG. And we can't do anything. Those guys are like keeping an explorer trapped in there, but we can't do anything about it just yet, so. We hop up on the ladder and continue further into native territory. Yeah. I I almost find the hot coals a little weird because you unlock the ability to run on them so quickly that they don't they're not even a hazard anymore. You can just immediately bypass. Yeah, and they just make it more dangerous to move around. Really blocked them from you. I, I don't know. I find that a little weird. Yeah, well, I mean, it's still like you know, obviously, it, it hinders your movement because when you're walking on it, you can't use any items. Oh, okay, I can see so that. So it that ever... because that's all analog oh, stuff. So I need to watch more animals. Oh no! Nope. See, look, that monkey hugged me. Oh, there you go. Now you're a walking target. Do you say <laughs> you can zoom in? And there it is. <laughs> You know, what you know what these animals beating each other up reminds me of? It reminds me of that shitty Noah's Ark game on the NES where the animals, the fucking squirrels would just like conk out the fucking lions. Yeah. 
Oh man, Pitfall, shit out of the Pitfall, lions. dude, Pitfall Harry versus uh, Noah. Noah, who wins? Noah. They're both extremely strong. I don't know. I saw Pitfall Harry spin kick a tree that was like <laughs> fucking a hundred feet tall. That's true, but Noah did also like stack twelve animals on top of himself. Yeah. 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 You, you hear that monkey just drop a sick belch? Mm -hmm. Oh, is that the monkey? Yeah, I don't know why, but they do that. Oh. You hear Leech up there, that propeller dude from earlier? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. He, he wants me to bring the torch up there so we can see. Offering you the sick gameplay mm. advice, yeah. No, that, yeah, that monkey's just staying on you. Yeah, he'll just he'll stay until I, I leave the level. He's just I, part of my model. I now. gotta say, it's kind of it's kind of cool. You didn't see it that much. That the enemies will stay until you leave the area. Like after you kill them, the corpses just sit there. Yeah. There were not yeah. a lot of games that did that. Now I think yeah. most games had much bigger areas between loading screens than this game did, which is probably how they got away with it. You know what I mean? Because in like a lot of games, like you know, Ratchet and Clank, they had these pretty massive areas. With enemies that respawned, I think, most of the time, too. So. Yeah. I'm not saying that these areas are tiny, I'm just saying that, like, I think the the way they really got away with that is by, you know, making the area between loading screens size wise not that big. Yeah, exactly. Which was. Uh, I don't know why. It, it's kind of hard to. There's a, a trick to getting the moves to come out, because they're all, you know, involve hitting two buttons. And so, like, uh, you have to hit them, you know. You're hitting them at the exact same time, but there's sort of, uh, that'll do it, but if you hit, like, one before the other, it won't work, if that makes sense. Like, it wants me to hit A and B, okay? Yeah. If I hit B, A, it doesn't work. If I hit A, B, it works. And if I hit them at the exact same time, it works. You oh, see what I mean? I see. Ah, much better. Got a question. Bittenbinder told me that your group is here looking for Kevin McAllister. What was McAllister looking for? Another page from the Heroic Handbook, you know, helps you be heroic, or a handbook. McAllister? Okay, okay, he was looking for El Dorado. El Dorado? That's just a myth. So they say, but I don't trust they, or them, or him, or her. In fact, I'm suspicious of all pronouns. I think El Dorado is real. So where do you fit in? I'm interested in time travel. What's that got to do with anything? Nothing. I'm just interested. You see, look at this. A new oh, technique. The heroic, heroic dive. dive. Look at that. Alright. And this is just, you know, standard sort of, you know, useful technique. Okay. Dive under things. And the same thing here, if I hit, like, jump and then... It's jump and crouch. If I hit jump and then crouch, you know, like, if I if I had that one input just a millisecond beforehand, it doesn't work. If you hit crouch and then jump, it works. Well, yeah, didn't you ever play Super Mario 64? You gotta crouch and then jump to do the long jump. Exactly. So it's like, sometimes I try to hit them in the exact same time, but it's better to lead with the, the one input slightly before, you know, like a piano motion. I'm assuming yeah. you gotta come back to solve this puzzle or something. Just yeah. like drop the monkey off or something. Yeah, well, all, <laughs> all it is, all it is, is that guy that we killed in the bush. Mm -hmm. You'll have him follow you because remember he follows you when you're not looking at him, mm -hmm. and he'll fall in there and it'll cause it to stay down. Oh, okay. But oh. I already killed him, so I come back and do it. You know. Okay. I didn't even know. I didn't think the game was. And look, we enroll with our monkey. I, I really would have thought you could do like a, a weird roll or something to get that monkey off of you, or like a spin kick. But nah, he's just no. there now. Yeah, or like, yeah. I don't know, pull out the torch and the monkey, you know, jumps off of you or something. I don't know. It's kind of hard to bounce out of these holes. <laughs> yeah? Oh, so you are supposed to be in here. Yeah, you gotta like line up just, just yeah? right. I, actually, I did watch the speed run, and there's like a technique where they'll crouch jump, come out of crouch, and then double jump, and that lets them skip the rising strike sections. Huh. Nice. Now, how do you like that? I appreciate the help, bud. Yeah. That, that was a technique, right? Yeah, yeah. Having Very her nice. kick that open for me? Yeah. 
Thank God I got that monkey off of me in that loading screen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now I don't have any monkey on my back. But um, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I love those sound effects where he just gets in the morning. He's like, oh, oh. or oh yeah. And so we come over here and realize, oh great, a another slip that we can't climb on. So let's try it again. <laughs> Yeah. Say, I really is, wish you could is... jump out of the water. Hmm? Oh, I just I really wish you could jump out of the water. Also, I, I hadn't said anything. The music in this game uh, is actually pretty good, I think. Like, some sections are kind of generic, but I think the like the peaceful music here is very Spyro-esque. I'm just saying yeah. the water is completely ruining all my immersion. I know, it's, such, it's just the worst water ever. It's the worst water I've ever seen. I can't play this game. In <laughs> fact, I can't be on this Let's Play anymore. Just right, every time goes. I look at that water, I'm just reminded of my ex-wife. Yeah. <laughs> I can't play this game either. I don't have a GameCube, a PS2. Whenever I try to download emulators, like, I don't know. They always become viruses. I, just, <laughs> I, become I literally virus. can't play this game. <laughs> no. Yeah. I don't know. No, it's like, and, and you, you know, it's funny that you say that, because I looked it up, I said that it came out for PS2, GameCube, Xbox, but it also came out on PC. Oh, really? Wow. And was later in Europe, uh, ported to the Wii, with the t under the title Pitfall, The Big Adventure. <laughs> the I guess Lost Expeditions adventure. were no longer in vogue in 2008. Like, Larry's what? Big Adventure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, pit <laughs> yeah, Leisure Suit Harry's Big Adventure. Oh, I said Larry, I meant, I meant Harry. Well, yeah. it, it, this guy is Leisure Suit Harry going off the cutscenes we've seen. So. No. I, I will uh, give full credit to Connor because he made that joke off camera. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I just stole it. Yeah. But now I, I'm giving it back to him, so. Thanks. You can't enter. Why? Because if you do, I kill you. I can't even come in for a visit? If you visit, I kill you. You're kind of hung up on this killing thing, aren't you? You ask me any more questions, I kill you. Don't mind him. Everyone is tense since Mika, the princess, vanished. What if I find her for you? You still here? I kill you. I've never understood why princesses always seem to be in need of saving. But if that's what the natives wanted out of their hero, I figured I could deliver. Even though I'd never met any, no princess could resist the charms of Pitfall Harry. Charms of Leisure Suit Harry. Yeah, I, 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 I almost wonder if that's what they're going for, because, I mean, it's pretty, like... Oh. I love that sound effect where he bangs his head. It's just... I mean, that, that really does sound so painful. That's just boom! <laughs> One door you can't open with your face. It reminds me of uh, that uh, inline skating game Connor played. What was that? Um... Uh, the, the one people one. know or the one people don't know? The one people don't know. Rolling. Oh, so. Rolling, where if you, uh, just, like, you didn't have to bail, but if you just, like, bumped into the wall, you'd leave, like, a big blood smear. Oh, yeah! That's what yeah. that reminds well, I me mean, of. It's like, you're not hurting, you're not taking any health, you're not hurting yourself. It still sounds like you're getting killed. I mean, to be fair, that happens to me a lot in real life. Yeah, yeah I, I, I go in line skating, I touch a wall, and I leave just a massive blood splat, splat all over the wall. Um, excuse me? Your name is Pitfall Harry. You dig things up and fight evil. Sounds about right. But how do you... What did you just do? How can I help you, Harry? I've been by your village. I think they're worried about you. I just wanted some butterflies. Why? You don't need a reason to want something. If I get you some butterflies, will you go home? If you'd like me to. Butterflies coming right up. We are back on the case. Gotta get some sweet butterflies, and it's not immediately obvious how to do it there's kind of a it's you kind of have to figure it out because um oh there might be a hint that tells you maybe later on but you can see some butterflies flying around a torch later in this level and that gives you the hint to whip out your torch and get those butterflies following them. Isn't that moths that are attracted to light though 
No, I, mean, I, I mean, mean, I guess sort of every insect. Yeah, video games and all that. That whole, say, I, that whole you know, joke I, I'm about... I'm pretty sure you don't kick down trees or through rock in real life, either. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that whole joke in that previous cutscene about why are there always princesses that need saving. You know, video games 101. I just mean, I, like, yeah. I feel like that wouldn't yeah. be... Definitely wouldn't be immediately obvious, because I don't usually associate butterflies with being attracted to yeah. light. That's usually yeah. moths. Yeah. I mean, I guess. <laughs> yeah. You think I mean, you see but, where I'm yeah. coming from, though, right? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I mean, I sort of do, but then, like, you know, I didn't have any problems with it, so it's like... Oh, well, yeah, I'm just saying. I feel like it's... I'm not... Not a problem, because, yeah, look, you see you, fly, you see him flying around the torch, and it's like, ah, oh, there you go. I'm not saying it's a massive yeah. issue or anything, I'm just... Plus, I'm pretty sure they would be, aren't they? Pretty, isn't pretty much every insect, like, see light and go, oh my god, I gotta have that? Uh... I don't know. I'm not an insectologist or something. Yeah. An I'm, insectarian. Yeah, I'm just a gamesologist. Over here. I do like the music. There's another area where I really like the music, too, and I don't remember where it is. <laughs> Thank you. Come and visit me at the village sometime. Phase one of my plan was complete. Rescue Princess from the clutches of evil butterflies. Phase two was about to start. Being welcomed with open arms at the native village. Yeah, so a short chapter there, I guess, because, you know, we oh, just uh, found out about the princess, and now we went and rescued her, and we get the next phase of the plan, like he says, going into the village. Yeah. You think of the next cutscene, he's gonna walk over there, and he's gonna be like, I'm real close to leveling up, and you look like just enough XP. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, check this out. Mm. Uh oh Did you see me being brave there? Just, like, gave that gorilla a little, a little punch. Ow. You can't hurt them with anything but the very last weapon you get. You're back? Now I kill you. Who do you think got your princess to come back? With those butterflies? That was you. Then you're welcome into our village. <sighs> Before you come in through, I was wondering. No pressure, mind you. But maybe sometime down the road, perhaps letting me, you know, kill you. What's with you in the killing? I guess it's been a while. Have you ever thought of redirecting your energies? Taking up a hobby? Like chasing wild boar, for instance? I could chase a wild boar and kill it. Yeah, sure. Could you open the gate now, please? All right, into the village we go. Here's where we'll uh, get a new item. And we'll also have some mini games that you'll see me complete later in the game with the various tools that we collect. Oh, nice! And you have to do that to get idols. The wow. mini games, uh, yeah, you can just fight them and they won't do anything. Yeah, they're welcoming you with open arms, and you're welcoming them with like open fists, just slapping <laughs> them around. Yeah, I don't know why I was Breaking just Breaking them Legend of Zelda style, just coming in here, I'm gonna break all your stuff. And look at this, they had a henchman pinned up. I thought it was an explorer, like, I was like, oh, some idols, and it's like, no, it was just one of the henchmen, so. I clock him. After he Broke goes him out of jail clocks. just so I could put him down. Yeah. Yeah. Can you really Well, I like just... the music here, this is actually where. Wow, you I just like destroyed sort of... their campfire somehow. Yeah, if you punch all the wood, yeah, the whole fire just dissipates. And here's another henchman. Mmm! <laughs> They haven't faced justice until they faced Pitfall Harry Justice. Dang. Exactly. <laughs> and I like I, I, I'm I'm just a sucker for that like world music sort of stuff, you know. Yeah. I think the track here with like the vocals sounds cool. Yeah. I see you are punching those henchmen in caves. Very impressive. By returning Princess Mike to our village, you've done a great thing for our people. You are now an honorary member of our tribe. Take this shield. It will protect you from weapons. It will protect you from the sun. 
and you can float on it down the river. But only for five seconds, because then it will sink. Thanks. Let the initiation rites begin. Let the initiation rites begin. Uh, what initiation rites? We initiated 12 men last year. Two survived the test. You have nothing to worry about. All right, so we have our standard tutorial here. We have the shield, which is not an overly useful ob like object. It's pretty much just used for the spiky stuff, and that's it. Oh. So not like deflecting enemy project uh, what? Yeah, so I'm like, hey, what if I just jumped across? <laughs> yeah. Sometimes yeah, it can it's... like protect you from porcupines and such, but it, I just find it's usually not worth it when you can just dash past them. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta get uh, one of those fast passes. Ah. Uh -huh. What the fuck is this? It's a howling monkey, and so all the monkeys are throwing down mangoes and shield yourself. Nice. That does not sound like. That sounds like somebody getting gored. Yeah, it's just a bunch of fruit, like just squishing <laughs> it's a, it's a, and slumping. You know what's funny? Around. That is the 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 bone smashing sound effect from Half Life. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's it's it's. <laughs> They're just getting you fucking killed. You have completed killed. the initiation rite, apparently without dying. Now you can compete in the ancient games of skill, and you can also come and go at will. Safe from harm from our people. Sounds good. Though our warriors will not bother you in the wild, there are some renegades who are outside of our control. Avoid them. They will try to destroy you. How will I differentiate them from your warriors? By their red glowing eyes. Why do their eyes glow red? None of us are really sure. Really. Some think it's some combination of magic and evil. But that's just a guess. <laughs> Maybe they stare at the sun too much. <laughs> they stare at the sun too much? <laughs> yeah, like Ray Charles. <laughs> that Once thing I was actually shield, fun. I knew I could head through the butterfly glade and into renegade territory. See what they were up to. And who knew? Maybe I'd find an explorer or two tied up somewhere. Oh, yeah. I gotta say, this game is getting better on the humor side. I feel like we've have we passed the worst of the cutscenes? Yeah. Are we is it all smooth sailing from here? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean I was never bothered by the other ones, you know, it's just, you know your standard sort of, you know, two thousands cartoon humor. I mean I wasn't bothered I no, I'm just saying, you know, they weren't super funny. Hey Princess. Yeah, they get funnier, definitely. What's wrong? Have you ever felt like you belong in a different time? Not really. This is my time. Every day, I make it mine. My time is still to come, yet it's in the past. Hey, if you think this woman of mystery thing is gonna work on me, forget it. Be careful. All right, here we go. We are off into Renegade territory, and I feel like, if I remember right, I kind of screwed this up because um, I had to come back and, like, do a bunch of stuff that I totally could have, like, idols and stuff that I totally could have gotten along the way, but hmm. it is okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah. And I just sort of show off the rest of the village. And by show off, you mean destroy, right? Well, of course. Yeah. yeah. It's, a nice, it's funny because it's a really, like, look at all these cool structures, I mean, and there's, it's all just decoration, you know? Mm -hmm. this looks like, like literally everything here is for decoration. Over. Here's the native games. Yeah. So you can see most, we can't do hardly any of them because they require, you know, various tools that we'll get later. Hmm. Uh, oh, like, just puts puts them in the book and then you pick here, okay. Yeah, you can come back for them. So I do the first two levels of the Tuco shoot, mm -hmm. which is, of course, the slingshot challenge and the most annoying one because of the, you know, emulation controls but yeah I make it work just by doing rapid fire and panning around yeah yeah because I mean you can really get those stones going <laughs> yeah it's like that it's like oh what's that Donkey Kong 64 minigame that's basically the same thing 
You shoot the watermelons at the, at the crocodiles because... or whatever so that they don't eat the fairies or whatever. Yeah. So there you we go. Win. Easy is no problem. No, these aren't really that difficult. They're just, they're not a lot of fun. The bowling one is super fun. Yeah, if it's just for idols, I can see how it's kind of, you know, just feels like extra content. Yeah, but like I said, the bowling one is super fun. I almost wish they had included, like, multiplayer. If you remember in the Spider-Man game, the one based on the movie, the one based on the first movie, it had a ton, like, it had almost as many extra levels, if not more, than the main game had levels. And one of them was a bowling minigame where you'd web swing down the lane and kick the pins down. I don't remember this. No, I never yeah. played that one. I, I, I played the heck out of it as a kid, and um, and I also played Ultimate Spider-Man, which is the best one. And that bowling game, I used to get together with the fam, and we'd all Spider-Man bowl. <laughs> yeah, yeah. New school. It was cool. The game was, the game was single-player outside of that one minigame. You know, new school kids gather around with their families and play Wii Bowling. Old school kids remember playing Spider-Man 1 Bowling. Nobody plays Wii Bowling. As I say, that, that, now that's, that's old school. That's old the school. new school is we all get together and play Raid Shadow Legends. Yeah. I'm too old. And <laughs> look at this, they're still trying to shoot me, those porcupines. They want you dead. <laughs> they're gonna kill yeah, and you. And sadly, I can't scene. do... Yeah, and I can't do the third level yet because... It pretty much requires the super sling, which you can use to knock out the porcupines. Hmm. Ah, super okay. sling is something I have to buy, so I just take out care of the first two levels now, and we'll come back to it later. I like how yeah. the fire stays there whenever you destroy yeah, it's, the wood. The fire is just like the fire is there, independent of the wood. Yeah. Well, it'll go down in a second. I just ran past it before it disappeared. I just like that it, it stays there for a second at all. That's just funny to me. The speed of Harry's fast running gave it enough air to continue burning. Yeah, it gave it enough oxygen to not need yeah. any. Yeah. Now look at this. This area has changed. Now these renegades have caged up the baby monkeys and are tormenting the moms. And so I decided to do a good deed and free the monkey moms. At least one of them. Nice. Nice. And she's actually taking care of business, I think. And, you know. As long as your baby like, stays away. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, man, there's only so much, you know, Spider-Man can't save everyone, so. <laughs> so I move on. Yeah, I got yeah. shit to do, see ya. I'm not gonna kill you, but I don't have to let you live. Speaking of Spider-Man, it's the guy who voices Spider-Man. What are you doing? Going boing. I know that. Then why'd you ask? You're strange, you know. You know, life's getting a little complicated. Lay it on. There's this girl. Keep going. Dr. Love is in the house. Nicole? Oh, great girl. Pet me behind the ears for two hours. She'd be perfect for you. Except, of course, that she thinks you're an idiot. Because you wouldn't talk when you were supposed to. Harry, you can't live your life in the past like that. Hey, since I learned to talk, these guys revere me like a god. Hey, fellas. What's up? thought they revered you like a god. Well, not everyone feels comfortable around uh, a god. I love that. Not everyone feels comfortable around a god. <laughs> I'm a god, bitch. That's like that Squidward thing, you yeah. know? Yeah. So, poor Quick Claw, an outcast uh, from society. Whoa. Mm -hmm. This says a lot about our society. And you finally learn how to talk, and nobody wants you anymore. <laughs> Do we still you, live in a society, or is that outdated now? You finally learn how to talk, but nobody wants to hear you speak. Damn. Oh, man. Absolutely. I feel that. Yeah. 
Like, all day, every day. Yeah. Yeah, and let's just shield dash right into the new next level. Shield bash. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Renegade Fort. Or font. I couldn't tell. <laughs> that was quite a renegade font. <coughs> yeah, look at this place. Now, what's actually cool is over here, yeah, where all those crocodile pits are, there is a swimming... Crocodile? Do what? Nothing. No, you keep going. Oh, yeah, there's a pit over there past the crocodiles where you can swim down, and it takes you back to Bittenbinder's camp. Uh, okay. Yeah. So th that's the shortcut that you'll need to take to avoid having to do that great tree climb. All right. Yeah. No, I was. So gonna they ask don't give you yeah. fast travel, but at least you know it's quicker. Yeah. They do it the Dark Souls style. This is the yeah. first Dark Souls thing. Like, yeah. 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 Um, but I was gonna ask if you could shield yourself from crocodiles now with the shield. No, nothing. Nothing will save you from the wrath of the crocodile. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Damn, you just fucking Shrek. Yeah, and now, uh, this is, uh, kind of a tight, timed little puzzle here, so we just have to swing over, jump over, swing again, and get under that gate. Oh, okay. And just roll through. Okay, I didn't see that, but you obviously know yeah. what you were doing, so. Yeah, and we'll be getting another, uh, item here, too. Yeah, I, I guess the game would be longer if you did go, okay, let me go backtrack and get every idol I can now get with the new thing I've got before going yeah, you... immediately to get the next thing. Yeah, it's way quicker to just wait until you have everything and then go do it. Yeah. Because, like, a lot of areas will have, you know, a lot of areas will just have sections where there's, like, three idols hidden and one of them you need, you know, maybe the shield will help you. But you need TNT for the other one, and so it's like, you might as well just wait until you have the TNT, which is the last item you get. Right. Not a spoiler, because the game, you know, has been telling us, you need TNT to blow up this wall. Right. Did that... Did, no, no, did, no. Uh, Yeah, the shield protects you from the, uh, bolt. the stones, which is I was gonna sweet. say, did that boulder just bounce off of you? Yeah, if you have the shield, you can just bounce the boulder back. Keep in mind, Harry is, is so strong that apparently all he needs is just a little shield to save him from a rolling boulder. Well, you know, rolling stone. Yeah. 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 Gather like a moss. rolling stone, yeah. <laughs> Bob Dylan or Bob Sackett or whoever sang that. I think it was, uh... Bob Seeger. Yeah, I was about to say Bob Seeger. <laughs> yeah. Say, look at the stinky gas. Ooh, I don't want to be anywhere near that fart gas. Oof. Yeah. Yeah, and the other reason the shield is it's funny, we actually get two pointless items. Kind of pointless. We have the shield we're gonna get the shield and we're about to get the gas mask, as you can tell from that stink. But the TNT that we'll get later can be used to blow up those spiky barriers and blow up those plants and just kill them, so Oh these two items will be completely replaced by the the TNT. <laughs> oh. Okay. But, Interesting. Yeah. It's kind of a, a weird design decision. But the TNT is just awesome. I mean, it kills... It's the only thing that can kill those plants. It's the only thing that can kill the, the monkey moms. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I guess, how do you cycle between all the different items once you have, I guess, more than the four you have up in the top corner? Uh, just standard hold a direction to assign whatever you want to that direction. Yeah, maybe, maybe they thought, like, oh, once you have all the items... It would be good to have the TNT do, like, three different things rather than... Yeah, it's probably it, so you're not constantly switching. Yeah. Yeah. This is actually one of the bigger areas in the game. I have no idea yeah. what happened there. <laughs> it's like my foot got, like, hit him on multiple frames, so he was just like... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you can see me putting the pieces together here. It's like, oh, a, a rope, and then a rope, and then a platform. Duh. <laughs> I mean, that Big rope thing. was pretty far away. I'm surprised you got it. Yeah, you see, I just caught it. Bear. So They're not messing around here. here. Yeah. yeah. And what's cool is those idols, you'll notice the explorer idols are all gold, whereas those are, like, just gold trim. Huh. 
Whew, I did not know if you were going to make it down there. Yeah. I'm just yeah. going to put my face right here. And Blake just, stone. Blake knows what he's doing. He knows where I, he's I, going. Well, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes. What's funny is I, I watched the speed run, and a lot of the tricks involved, like, uh, all of these cliffs you see, they were able to hop up the cliffs. And like I figured it was top. like there was enough movement stuff that yeah they probably like walk up vertical seams or something like that. Yeah, and I get the notes here. The notes will tell you, uh, like if I go to the map and I select like this is the Renegade Fort. If I select it, it'll tell me how many idols, explorers, and shaman are here. Oh, okay. I mean, there's only ever one shaman, but it'll tell you if there's a shaman there at all, if he's been used yet, and so it doesn't. It does. It doesn't. May not sound helpful, but it actually is useful because if I know that you know there's an idol left here, I know to keep looking for it and you know when to move oh, on. Oh yeah, so definitely. That does sound helpful, actually. In that like collecting yeah, game, it sounds very helpful to have something that tells you how much stuff you have to collect. And so, of course, Pitfall Harry, using a super strength, can gently nudge these huge pillars with the shield and send them toppling. I like how they keep their physics for just a little bit after they're destroyed, so they can bounce on top of each other before yeah. disappearing. I yeah, and they, and they stay solid, too. They can actually kill enemies if after you bump them if they hit them. Oh. That's cool. Right, so... Oh my gosh. I have made a grave mistake! <laughs> and that is all of them. And then more are gonna pop out. This is the real, you know, test your metal section. It's like, can you... Are you a bad enough dude to fight a thousand uh, renegade natives? Just drop a bunch of pillars on them. Yeah. Uh. They made a. Tiger that was a weird sound effect, but. It was yeah, that was their cool. that was their battle cry. Their battle they cry all like, like four times combined together. Yeah. I've got places to be. I love their run. The way they just like wave their hands are like, oh shit. Ah, uh -huh, watch out! It's Pitfall Harry. Oh, you can't actually touch that area. You just take damage. Yeah, and it'll kill you like like super quick. So. Yeah. Yeah. Will it kill them? Nope. Guess not. Nope. No, he's he's just like I don't know. Yeah, there's a, a very fa fancy filtration device built into that mask they have. Must be. Yeah. Well, that's okay. You got it too. Yeah. After shutting down the Renegade outpost, I found a gas mask that they'd stolen from our plane wreck. I knew it'd get me past all those stink clouds I'd seen up north in the jungle, and maybe even up into the mountains. Yeah, so then we have the gas mask. Yeah, they stole it from the plane and took it back here as a, a, a relic. Oh, if you, you look around, yeah, there's other stuff there. that they stole too, like the chairs and such. Yeah, how dare they? No one's been able to sit down while all those <laughs> chairs have been stolen. Stole their table yeah. too. They this is the first nice time any of these natives them. sat down in their lives. They never had chairs before. Yeah, yeah. What a world. And so, of course, just you know, the analog thing. You know, hold the mask right up to your face. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I thought you actually put it on, but no, you just hold it up. Okay. Yeah, like I said, analog stick is used for every item. So, and I like that. I, I, I kind of, it, it, it. it can be done, it was done poorly by a lot of games, but I, this game does it well, you know, I keep mentioning Ape Escape because that game famously did it really well. Yeah. Yeah. It got out of hand, though. I remember, like, there was that period of, like, early Xbox 360 games where they felt the need to map every possible function to the analog stick, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Wasn't there that one PS2 action, like, fighting game where... Oh, you know, never mind. Well, I think there was, but I was thinking of um, Grab by the Ghoulies on Xbox, where fighting was done with the analog stick for some reason. Yeah. People were just in love with having those and two analog sticks. I swear sticks. there I mean, was one it. on the PS2, and it starred, like, uh, what's his name? Not Bruce Lee. Uh, who's that other guy that's famous? Uh, uh. Kung Fu guy. Um, what's killing me? I'm Chuck really Norris? Not Chuck Norris. T the Tony Ja? I don't... No, 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 no. Uh, he's still around. He still makes movies. Talking about Jackie Chan? Jackie Chan, yeah, I think it starred Jackie Chan in the game. And uh, uh, I cannot remember its name, but it used the analog sticks for fighting. Yeah, like I said, all sorts of games did back yeah. then. It was just everyone, even though we had twin analog stick, you know, for the PS1, it took until the, like the PS2 and then 
through the, like the 360 for people to be like, oh my gosh, what if we use this for everything? That's why Ape Escape was such a big deal. They famously said on the box, uh, the only PS1 game to fully utilize the analog sticks. I have to look this game up. It's gonna kill me. I don't yeah. remember its name. I mean, over in the uh, extreme sports genre, I know so well. Uh, the snowboarding game Amped 2 used the analog sticks for like everything, and oh, that was, actually worked out pretty well. It was Jet yeah. Li Rise to Honor. That was the name of the game. Did that have Jackie Chan in it? Am I going crazy? It probably had Jet Li in it. No, it had Jet Li in it, yeah. As I was say, uh, no, I, I think uh, you just confused them. <laughs> Jet Li Rise to Honor starring Jackie Chan. <laughs> well, I mean, he could have been in the game. So. Right, right, right. No. But, yeah, like, uh, yeah, like, uh, yeah, like, action sports games kind of went to that. Yep. You know, for a while you had the buttons being tricks, and then you went to the analog sticks, and it was like, oh, you hold up, and so you reach up and do a nose grab, and, you know, that went to, like... The skate series, I think. It was or played like from a third person perspective. Most of the, yeah. the majority of the game was a beat em up with the players using the right analog stick to direct blows. Yeah, I was right. It did use analog sticks. That game came out in 2004 as well. How about that? I told you that, that this was the era. Yeah. yeah. Some people had it, some people didn't. Yeah. A bygone era. Because when you look back at it, it's gone, and you can only say bye. Now, I remember this game, the Jet Li game, very well because I played a demo of it at, at Sam's Club. And my mom came up and she said, wow, all the characters are very ugly in this game. I don't want you playing this. <laughs> yeah, your mom, she, she believes strongly in uh, beautiful graphics. Yeah, yeah if, you have, if your game has bad graphics, my mom does not want <laughs> you playing it. Only the best graphics. Yeah, that's yeah. why that's why we got a PS3. You know, my mom was like, "These PS2 has too bad of graphics." <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna drag yeah, you into the next generation, whether you want to or not, <laughs> little yeah, Matt. Yeah, she'd boot up a copy of Two Human and be like, "Oh, it looks so good." <laughs> little Matt Trox. Yeah. Yeah. So it's time for us to use our newfound gas mask to go back and. Explore, of course, you know, I don't even bother going for the idols that it hides because, you know, I'll have TNT for that later. Yeah. Oh, when did you get another health point? I bought it from the shaman back there. Oh, oh okay. okay. Oh, dang. You got, like, lava coming up, I think. Yeah, it's it's just the coals, but it looks so much like lava. Yeah, no, like, this looks like real it's, dark it's and bugging me out, yeah. Yeah, we sort of just rat a tat our way across and Yeah. Oh here we go. <laughs> yeah, when you get a long ladder, it's like you're just like, oh man. <laughs> Doesn't that hurt a little bit, Harry? Just smashing your head into the ladder the whole way down. Yeah. Yeah, so few we have only a few of these underwater stages, actually just three, but this one's just a short like bridge. We'll have one later on. I, that's, I love uh, how he's kind of climbing up the ladder really slowly while he's suffocating. It's like, just swim yeah. up, dude. Uh, he's just got those super duper lungs. He takes he takes his time. Yeah. Yeah. You used to be a lifeguard, right? When you used to just swim to the bottom of the pool and sit there like Percy Jackson? Yeah. Yeah. I do, actually. Yeah. Matt was actually whenever, did you ever have to, uh, for Percy Jackson. Yeah, I yep. was actually. And then whenever I would have to, you know, come up to surface, I would take the ladder and I'd climb slowly up the ladder. Yeah, yeah. Now the question is, did you ever have to do that thing where you throw bricks at the bottom of the pool and then go and yes. swim down and retreat? Well, ironically, yes, we had to do that for lifeguard training. Yeah, you well, I to, did too. I was just—I wasn't sure if that was a universal thing yeah, or if that was just something I like to do. Throw the brick down. You had to throw the brick down uh, from the bottom of the pool, get it, and swim all the way to the other side of the pool within, I think, three minutes or two minutes, huh. in order to yep. pass uh, lifeguard training. There was one kid who managed to get like four of them from the deep end. Yeah, I, was, I, I think I about 18 one. feet deep. So he swam 18 feet down, picked up four of these like 10-pound bricks, and then swam them all up. Wild. It's super fun. <laughs> if I had a pool, I would literally just have it be like a 20 foot deep pit uh, where Jesus I would throw bricks Christ down and retrieve them. Terrifying. <laughs> now, I'm not a big fan. Like, like the deeper pool. it is, the more unsettling it is to me, to be honest. I don't like anything deeper than 12 feet. No, I mean, I like it nice and deep. 
I just it, like, very it's deep really hard to see once you get past 12 feet to the bottom of the pool. And I just start getting yeah. like really uncomfortable. Uh, yeah. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I remember when I would do that, guys. <laughs> yeah, I remember when I'd chill in my neighbor's backyard pool that was like eight feet deep. It was, uh, you know, real scary. Yeah. I yeah, battle you scarred. Only, you were only three feet tall at the time, so it was super deep. <laughs> right.